I haven't seen you since the last time you were here. I saw your lovely wife, though. She told me that. Yeah. We saw each other somewhere, some salon. You know, some she hair told salon. me um, after seeing you, she said, you know, I spent a month after having Livingston, our third child, in bed. And she goes, I had to watch a lot of TV in the day. She goes, there was one show that just I was able to escape and have a great time. And it was yours. That was so sweet yeah. of her. She told me that. Yeah. I said, that's how I get them. At home in bed. Yeah. The captive audience after they have a baby. That's how I get them. And get then them. I hold on to them. And then you keep them. That's right. Um, you look really good. You're, you're, you haven't like uh, gained all the weight back, but you look really good. I put 40 back on after that. Yeah. 40 back on, really? You look. 40 back on. Good. So that's uh, that's back to normal then. <laughs> no, I've you got lost? another about eight to go. Yeah. yeah. So now was that? I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times, but I get cranky if I miss lunch. So yeah. how do you like lose 47 pounds and work right. and have the energy to work because yeah. your the role was so intense? Well, I did, I did it the, the, as healthy way as possible. I mean, I, I met with two nutritionists first, so I found out how I could lose three and a half pounds a week. So I gave myself whatever that is, three four months. And I had eight meals. I just ate small meals. Um, like what? What did you eat? Five ounces of fish, a couple of vegetables, um, a little something else, uh, three times a day. And I also had my red wine at night. Keep, oh, my, you keep actually, my head straight. You could have yeah. wine? That's a lot I don't of sugar. Know, part of it worked. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I started off exercising really hard, you know, going for two hour runs, burning lots of calories. And then I injured my ankle, so I couldn't do it for about 10 days. But I stayed on the diet and I lost just as much weight. And I said, well, forget that. I'm not exercising yeah. anymore. <laughs> but and you always exercise. You were always in, you love exercising, right? Yeah, I do. But this was a different, this for four months, I was pretty hermetic. I mean, I stayed in, had controlled meals, didn't go outside and get sunshine because the guy needed to be pale as he was. And uh, so I read and wrote more than I ever had. And I wouldn't take it, like, I wouldn't go meet you at a restaurant. <laughs> Because I didn't want to put myself under that temptation. Right. I but just you shot in New Orleans, how, the worst city in the you, world to you're try. You're from there. How do yes. you do that? Right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't go out. It's <laughs> nothing but we food. We snuck out. We'd show the kids the parade, and then I'd get back home. Yeah. You know? um, so, yeah, New Orleans is a tough place if you're going to even walk out the door to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> just smell the beignets. <laughs> yeah. And, every, you know, New, New Orleans. Yeah. A cocktail or a beignet 24-7, seven, seven days a week. Yeah. Anytime's a good time. Yeah, it's, it's mandatory. You have to drink and eat there. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you did. You sacrificed so much, obviously, to, to play this role to, like you said, you had to kind of stay in and, and, uh, and, and starve yourself. But you were so brilliant. The film is so good. And uh, were you aware of this? What, what, did, what was your awareness of AIDS at that time? At that time, I, I didn't know about Ron Woodruff or the, or the buyers clubs. Um, I grew up in Longview, a few hours east of where this took place. So it was 1986. I was a sophomore in high school. Then I remember going, hearing about HIV and AIDS, and uh, you know, it was very, it was, it was, it was kind of a taboo thing that was kind of out there. It was a very foggy understanding. Plus, I was 16. I wasn't really thinking about it that much. But it being about 18. 18 years old, I remember going to a few doctors and, and being concerned and saying, would somebody give me some science? As a heterosexual man who's doing what I'm doing as safely as I can, can you give me some science on what should I be scared? And it was everything from you better abstain and become a monk to no, you're okay. And I remember three different doctors having completely different diagnoses and, and, and percentages of, of how, what you should or shouldn't do. And, and so I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people were really, really, really scared whether we said it or not. And I think it was, there was paranoia and a lot of that came from the ignorance and just not really knowing. Mm -hmm. you know? And then here's this guy who was not educated, who mm -hmm. was heterosexual, who, uh, well, you should explain what the Buyers Club is, what the Dallas Buyers yeah, Club is. The Dallas Buyers Club that this guy Ron Woodruff opened up is, you know, he, he had HIV. The doctors, nobody at this time really knew what the right prescription was. They were given AZT. AZT was working somewhat, but it, it, your, your quality of life was very poor um, on it. So he went out and smuggled in these other different drugs and vitamins and medicines from these other different countries. Now, they were unapproved in America by the FDA. He came back and knew that selling these, the, these drugs and medicines and vitamins would be illegal. And they could, uh, the law could get him. So what he did was he opened up a buyer's club. So he charged everybody $400 a month membership, but you can have as many of the meds as you want. So he found a loophole, and um, he got a lot of really important medicine to a lot of different people. Kept himself alive. He was given 30 days to live. He lived seven more years, um, and he kept a lot of other people alive quite quite a time longer than they were given. Yeah, it's it's amazing.